Good morning and happy Easter. Happy Easter. Yeah, good to see you all today. Just a, uh, a couple of quick notes as we get started here. In your bulletin, you will find a uh, little attendance card. If sometime during the service, you could give us a uh, record of your presence here with us today. If you are visiting with us uh, for the first time, it'd be great to have a mailing address or email address. We would like to thank you for being here um, worshiping with us today. Uh, so sometime during the service, if you could fill this out, and then uh, during the offering, just drop it in the, in the offering probably. Another thing you'll notice uh, at the end of each aisle, there is a little blue uh, folder that has some information about the church, some upcoming events. Um, there's even a little piece of paper in there that you can take with you for the next uh, few weeks. We have a chili cook-off coming up. There's a presentation on the 14th. Dennis is dancing with them in the back, if you could only see. He stopped now. Um, happy Easter. Yeah. Um, so that's all there if you want to take a look at that um, anytime besides during the sermon. Yeah. Welcome. May you find God's love, peace, grace, and joy as we worship today. Our poem this Easter morning is titled, And I Hope. It is by Sarah Speed, a member of the Sanctified Art Lenten series. I cannot stay away on Easter morning. Like Peter, Peter, I would run if I could, stop the car, pump my arms, take the church steps two at a time, all to know, did it happen? Did it really happen? Is evil no match for love? I'd slide down the center aisle. I'd grab the mic to ask the angels, the heavens, the children, were the stories true? And in response, the choir would sing, Alleluia. The children would flower the cross. The preacher would tell me the stone was rolled away. The people would pass the peace and welcome strangers and make room in the pews. And with faith over doubt, I would hope. For I imagine that all of that ordinary holiness would be enough for Peter, and it would be enough for me. Thank you. 
Would you please stand and join me in the call to worship? <laughs> Yesterday we thought death had won. Yesterday we thought all was lost. Yesterday we thought Christ was gone, but not today. Today we know that love has won. Today we know that hope is real. Today we know that Christ is here. We have a reason to hope. We have a reason to sing. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen today. In the Gospel of Luke, the women come to the tomb, and to their surprise, instead of finding Jesus, they find angels. The angels tell the women, Jesus is not here. And when that answer is met with confusion, the angels say, remember what he told you. Remember. It's one of the words Jesus used at his Last Supper, and it's one of the first words we hear at the empty tomb. Remember. I think this call to remember is why we need the prayer of confession and these words of forgiveness every single week. It's not enough to hear of God's grace once. We need to hear it over and over again, week after week. We need to be reminded that God's grace and mercy will never run out. So friends, let us run to God like the women ran to the tomb. Let us tell the truth of our lives so that once again we can be reminded that our God is a God of grace, mercy, and love. Let us pray so that we can remember. Join me in the prayer of confession. The stone is rolled away. 
They assume it is a mistake. The angels say, he's not here. We assume their news is fake. The women tell the story. We do not want to hear it. Peter runs to the tomb. We do not understand. Forgive us, God, for thinking an empty tomb is nothing more than a prank. Forgive us for seeing discarded burial cloths and still holding tight to death. Forgive us for pushing away reasons to hope when you are alive and well in the world. Teach us to see what you see. Unravel the threads of our unbelief. Amen. The angels tell the women, remember what Jesus told you. So church, remember this, you are seen, you are forgiven, you are held in God's grace. All of this is true. Grace and mercy abound for you. Remember this. Amen. Since God has made us the blessed community, the church, let us greet one another in whatever way we can with the peace and joy of Christ. Peace and joy be with you.
Will you pray with me? God of new beginnings, on that first Easter morning, the disciples struggled to hear the good news. Doubt clouded their minds. Negativity took root and hope vanished with a simple shake of their heads. As we return to this familiar text, help us to hear differently this morning. Open our ears that we might hear the sound of alleluias ringing through this text. Open our minds that the mystery and joy of Easter might feel within reach. Open our hearts that we might believe the unbelievable. And like Peter, in this hearing, may we move closer to you. God of the empty tomb, we are hungry for your good news. Speak to us now. With hope in our hearts, we listen and we pray. Amen. Our text this morning comes from the 24th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, the first 12 verses, and can be found on page 90 in the New Testament section of your pew Bibles. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. 
Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen clothes by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. May the Lord grant us hearts and minds to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We have been throughout Lent, the last six weeks or so, following the life of Peter as Peter encountered Jesus, went through all kinds of interesting uh, good times and bad times in his understanding of what was going on. And this Easter Sunday, we return to Peter again, running to the tomb. The theme proposed is, and I hope, and I hope, with an ellipsis after it. Um, I have been repeating these words to myself over and over again for about three weeks now, trying to think, what does it mean to hope? What, What could I possibly say that would give us some hope? And I remembered that it's strange when we come to this Easter Sunday because most of us, even I, don't spend the time in between to figure out where Peter's head is at in this moment. Because Peter is in the midst of the deepest despair that you can imagine. He has not only lost a good friend, a teacher. He has lost someone that he had pinned all of his hopes on. And not just hopes for his own personal transformation or his own personal success as a teacher himself or or whatever individual aspiration he might have had. He had pinned the hopes on all of the people that he knew and loved not only his immediate family and community, but the people that he considered his tribe, his people. He had thought that this one who had come was going to bring justice and goodness and life into the world. And just as he had come to challenge the ones who kept the, his people oppressed, and poor, and struggling, this Jesus was killed, executed. And he had no idea what that meant. No idea what he would do next. No idea what to do for his people. No idea what to do for his belief in the fact that there might be a greater power or a greater love in the world that seeks to bring goodness and justice and peace to all of creation. So it is in that moment when the women come. And the uh, English version is very polite. (laughs) Idle talk. Um, In the Greek, it's rubbish. It's trash. This is rubbish. You're talking rubbish to us right now. This is ridiculous. Please go away and stop teasing us with this garbage. Because it's just not going to help right now. We are happy 
<laughs> to just sit in our despair for a moment because to hope again after we had lost all hope is cruel to suggest that we do that. And this is where I sat most of the last three weeks thinking about the world that we live in filled with despair. <laughs> Watching a genocide take place every day, live on my phone. Watching again as all the nations of the world except our own decide that Cuba should not be blockaded, but, you know, hey, let's just try another 60 years and see what happens. Over and over again, a little bit of good news, and then right back again. But Peter, he can't help himself he just gets caught up in each moment that he's in. And he has to rush to go see. And the tomb is empty. He's amazed. It tells us something about this day for us. We don't have all of the answers to what it means or what it looks like. Listen, for thousands of years, people would come up with all kinds of cool theories about, you know, <laughs> I almost brought a big book that I have. It's like this big, you know, just about the biblical whatever of Jesus' resurrection. But the true message that Peter is trying to sink into us from this text is that it's worth it. It's worth it. To get up whatever gumption it takes to rush into a place that might hold hope for our future, for the future of justice and peace and love in the world, no matter what kind of rubbish it seems like to everyone else around you, it is worth it. It is worth it to be one of six people standing on the side of the road saying, free Palestine. It's worth it to write the letter to your senator that may be the only one of five or six. It's worth it to show up for people in your life that need you to be there for them. Even if it's hard. Even if it doesn't end the way that you hope it will. Because what the powers that be tried to kill what they tried to stick in a cave somewhere. Can't be held down. It is free and loose in the world. We say Jesus Christ is risen because we believe that the One who came to liberate the oppressed the One who came to preach good news to the poor, the One who came to bring peace on earth, is free and moving and living here in us, here around us. The tomb is empty. God's love, justice, peace, and mercy is swirling all about us. Don't be afraid 
to get up. To go find it. To go be in the place that you feel called to show up. To be the presence of God's love, peace, and justice in the world. Will you pray with me? God of love. Love that is loose in this world. Bring us the compassion, the courage, maybe even the foolishness to get up, to listen to Your call, to allow ourselves to hope. And then breathe on us the Spirit that is alive in us and around us. Move us to be your people of peace and justice in this world. Amen.
ask that you remain standing as we affirm our faith using the affirmation of faith in the bulletin. We may weep through the longest nights. We may stare at the empty tomb with more questions than answers. We may run our fingers over the burial clothes and still long for more. But today we are a people of hope. We believe in new beginnings. We believe that the God who created the world is stronger than death. We believe that Jesus abides among us, healing, teaching, and leaving fingerprints throughout this world. We believe that a tomb could not hold him. We believe that the sun does rise. We believe that Peter was there with questions, awe, and faith the size of a mustard seed. We believe that the story is not over yet, for God is among us. Today, we are a people of hope. Amen. You may be seated. Just a, a quick reminder that there are these uh, attendance cards in, in your bulletin or somewhere if you give us a record of your presence here. Um, also, I forgot to mention earlier, there is a space on the back for any prayer requests that you have. So if you do um, uh, have some of those, that'd be great. I see some people in the room that we're, uh, we've been praying for. So that's wonderful. So uh, please add, add those as well. This is our opportunity out of gratitude for all that God has blessed us with, all that God has done for us to return a portion with our morning offering.
as those who are serving and coming forward. As we begin to share this meal together, just a reminder of maybe some of the things that have been said already. <laughs> Whatever it might be for you in your life that you might think would keep you from this table, keep you from sharing in all the love and goodness that God has for you. If, as the word says, the one who inspired creation can't be kept in a tomb, <laughs> whatever it is, it is forgiven. You are loved. You are welcome here at this table. This is a place where we come to be reminded that Christ is present with us, that God is alive in the world. From generation to generation, as mysterious as it may be, people have gathered around this bread and this cup and somehow have known that God is present here with them, that they're sharing once again in the possibility that love might win in the world. So know that you are welcome here at this table. The Lord be with you. Be. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Please pray with me. Loving God, we proclaim that it was your voice that spoke creation into existence because as we look around at the changing of the seasons, as we look around at all of the beauty and abundance that is possible in this world, we know that if we knew how to tend and care the way that you intend, if we knew how to sustain and steward what you have given us, that there is more than enough to share among us all. We know that that is not the way it has worked out year after year, century after century. But we also know that your love never stops speaking to us, manifesting in the person and life of Jesus, moving even beyond death and the grave to show us that there is cause to hope. There is reason to keep loving, to keep fighting for justice, to keep trying to make peace in the world. Because you are here and all of it is yours. You desire for us flourishing and abundance and goodness. So as we gather around these simple elements that remind us of all that is good in the world, unite us by the power of your spirit. May this sharing bring us together as people of your love and justice and peace and mercy and send us from this place filled to overflowing with hope and joy and the courage to be your people. Amen. On the very same night in which our Savior was betrayed and arrested, he took bread and after he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. In the same way, after dinner he took the cup and after giving thanks for it, he said to them, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Each time you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. The ushers will come and, and, and let you know when it's your turn to come forward. 
Um, if you come over from this side, if you can walk behind the table and head over there and drop your stuff off, it makes things easier. Um, over there, it's pretty straightforward. Um, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Please pray with me. Gracious loving God, again, we thank you for this opportunity that we've had to gather around your table. We ask that as we go from this place uh, to gather around other tables together, that your, your presence, your comfort, your peace, your inspiration to move us out into the world, would be present with us, and continue to sustain us all our days. Amen.
I offer you this uh, ancient benediction. Uh, I will say Christ is risen. You will say he is risen indeed. Do it a few times. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen Thank you. 